So I, I'm Brian Matthews. I'm, uh, I live in Leeds. I was born in Morpeth in Northumberland, uh, which makes me a Northumbrian rather than a Geordie, but um, a Newcastle United supporter nevertheless. Uh, I'm married with two children, well, two, uh, not really children anymore. Um, um, and yeah, I, I'm obsessed with music. When I was very young, I was totally into football. Uh, everything, everything was about football. Going to the, going to the match with my dad, playing football with friends around the, around the, the estate. Um, but then my eyesight started to, to fade, and um, I sort of, it sort of slowly dawned on me that um, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily destined for a, a, a Premiership uh, career. There was a, a classical guitar in the house, and I started picking this guitar up and trying to get trying to get some sounds out of it. At the time, we were going through to Newcastle for regular um, hospital appointments regarding my eyes. After those hospital appointments, I would I would drag my mum to uh, guitar shops in Newcastle, and uh, eventually, after what seemed like a long time, but it was probably probably just a few months. Mum and, mum and Dad got got me my first electric guitar, and um, on on the basis that I, I would start uh, having having some lessons. So yeah, that was probably when I was about twelve or something. I started to lose my eyesight, uh, kind of switched my focus from from football to uh, to music. And as I sort of started to get into music, I just you know threw myself more and more into that. Not being able to see didn't seem like a, a barrier to to doing it. I guess it was kind of lockdown uh, when you know when we were all kind of reappraising our. Uh, you know what, what we were doing with our lives. Just at that point in time, I'd followed something called the Songwriting Academy on YouTube. I, I met, met with Shelley Poole, one of the mentors at the Songwriting Academy, and one of the questions that she asked me was, you know, are you writing songs for uh, for other people to, to perform, or are you, are you the artist? And I, I didn't really know the answer to that question. More or less straight away after she'd listened to my, my songs, uh, my demos, she said, Brian, you are the artist. You've got to release these. At the time, I was record recording my, my demos through my phone on GarageBand, but obviously that wasn't going to be releasable quality. So that so the, the mentors were saying, you know, you need to get into a studio and you know record these properly. These need to these songs need to be heard. So that led me to contacting a couple of studios in Leeds and uh, going to Iger Studios and meeting. Dom. Something should probably come in there. Maybe just a kick. So that that I, I began to to record stuff there. Yeah, so I'm a music producer, engineer. Um, I've been in this specific space for about seven or eight years now. I've been doing it professionally for about 10. I started off in bedrooms, playing in bands, stuff like that. And then over the years, um, started to record mates' bands and lots of my friends' bands started to do bigger gigs and stuff like that, so I'd end up recording them. And then it became to a point where, oh, we need to, we need to find a space to record drums and whatever. So I started to like rent little studios out like this place. Escape and freedom. So yeah, over the last 10 years, that's what I started to do. And then it just snowballs, so I've kind of ended up, uh, yeah, been now a partner in this place for a few years, and this is like my home, really, for, for recording bands and artists, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Was that me? Yeah. That was, that was you. Brilliant. That's that's a brilliant drum fill. Dom's been brilliant. He, you know, he, he's, he's he's just kind of looked after all the all the technical side of stuff. Um, and yeah, we we seem to work really well together as a team. Yeah, the guy, apparently the guy, apparently we should do a mashup. <laughs> yeah, we should. Level five. Yeah, so actually, Brian, um, Brian just sent me some demos online, um, and I didn't obviously didn't know him or anything like that. As soon as I got those, like I always do with demos, I kind of sound them out, see if it's something that I'd be interested in, in recording myself, because I love all the old sort of like. 60s, 70s era, that's like kind of my thing. So when I heard it, I was like, oh, it's really reminiscent of that. It's got a great voice, all the guitars and stuff he played himself. He told me he'd done it on his phone in Garage Band. I was like, this is a great demo, you know. Yeah, I just said, come down, let's have a meeting. Like, he was doing have a coffee with bands, artists. And then, um, and yeah, we just, we just really got on. So um, yeah, it's been quite a nice working relationship since then, really. I mean, I think it's been about, it's probably been two years now, maybe even more, but um, but yeah, it's been it's been like a pleasure. He's just a great songwriter. Ringo Starr. Yes. <laughs> Brian comes in usually with a fully formed song um, or an idea for one, and then we just think about the instrumentation. And we need to stop there as well. There. Yeah. Will Fletcher uh, here in Leeds. He uh, spent time with me a few years ago, helped me figure out how to use GarageBand uh, with with voiceover. That was a real game changer actually, because it enabled me to. Record a piano track through through the through the phone, uh, then add guitar tracks and add multiple vocal tracks, so you can sort of build up the song. I'm not a, a, a sound engineer, but they're great for creating demos and you know creating the, the sort of release ready mixes is is you know what I do with Dom at Iga Studios. We are live. It's release day today. Uh, Deja vu all over I, again. I, Started getting into Instagram when when I was getting ready to start releasing. To start with Deja Vu all over again. Getting on for a year and a half ago, and it's been it's been an amazing journey. I can't believe the words she said to me as she walked out the door. And in terms of my artist name, I went on a sort of long search for you know what what should my my artist name be. Yeah, I, I overthought it for, for weeks, uh, what, what it could be, and started thinking about my mum again, and you know the, the, the big role she played in, in sort of starting me off on this, this route. My mum's birth name was Rain, R-A-Y-N-E, um, so I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe an artist name that features, features Rain as, as part of it. And again, I, I ended up talking to Shelley Poole about it, and she said, "Well, you know, what about just the rain?" That immediately sort of sounded right. That's that's the name. That's the artist name. Whenever you feel like something's important, then you know you're going to get nervous about it. It's about preparing, rehearsing, and when when you make a mistake, just keep going. <laughs> when people sing or play or perform, then you know they're really putting themselves out there and kind of making themselves vulnerable. When when people sort of trample on that and give give people feedback that, you know, causes them to question themselves, then you know that's that that that's that's such a shame and yeah just just the haters who, who kind of yeah have nothing constructive to say I think you know don't take any notes I've, I've made some amazing friends and co-writers uh, collaborators uh, all, all around the world a lot of it's social skills if you get on with people they'll book you to do things just getting yourself out there <laughs> more good show at the end. just book a trip down to London and go and see a venue speak to the people who run it and I think always just believe in what you're doing. I, I just encourage people to just get out and do it. Go to gigs, put your stuff out, get feedback from lots of people. Too many artists, they make their songs and they just allow them to escape into the world and then they just disappear, you know? So I think you've got to like put something behind it or believe that it's good enough. Make your music and just get it out. Don't hold on to stuff. So, you know, I'd encourage people to do that. Um, you know, what's the worst that can happen? That's what he did, the better work when you knit to the loo. Try not to let your impairment limit what you what you want to do. When I was a teenager, you know, I think the, the possibilities are, are, are 
of what you can do are, are so much uh, so much bigger now. And um, if you if you've got a if you've got a dream or a passion, then you know pursue that pursue that first. And if that doesn't work out, then there's always other stuff you can go back to. And, um, but you know pursue your dream or your passion first, and uh, you know that could well work out.